Welcome back, Pokemon trainers. Professor Chaz here, the Lab Coat's on back order, and it's Monday, November 14th, which means it's time for another Pokemon news update video thingy here on the channel. A little bit of a different format this time. I'm just using my webcam to record this because as we get to the later part of the video, you'll see there is one more trailer that has been revealed for Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon that I didn't know if they're going to have another one or not, but I want to check it out. And as far as just recording through webcam, it makes it quicker for editing and such, so I can get this up as fast as possible. But anyway, if you do follow the channel, you do notice that I missed a news update last week. I mentioned in one of the Pokemon Sapphire episodes that, unfortunately, life kept getting in the way. There were things coming up that I couldn't take care of, or I had to take care of, I couldn't record instead. And when I looked into it, there was only one thing to mention for the news last week, so I figured, you know what, let's just hold off until this week. And it's not going to be, you know, outdated. Well, it kind of is, and I'll explain that in a little bit. But anyway, the news from last week is going to be mentioned this week. But the other thing is, too, as I'm sure you're aware, if you follow the news updates, I always have a Pokemon booster pack opening for the cards. Well, since I didn't have one last week, I'm making up for that with three booster packs I'm going to be opening up this time. We've got Primal Clash, Roaring Skies, and Ancient Origins. Now, of course, as always, for your chance to win one of the code cards for Pokemon TCG Online, when I open these up at the end of the video, just answer the question of the day, which I'll give you as I open up the packs towards the end. So stay tuned for that. But first, let's get through a whole bunch of news. A lot of Pokemon TCG news this week. Let's see what else there is to mention. Well, first of all, of course, if you're not aware, on Friday, the 18th, Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon are going to come out worldwide. It's pretty cool. And I found out that I'll be picking up, or I could pick up, my copy of Pokemon Moon on Thursday at midnight, because my local EB Games is doing a midnight release, but I'm not going to be able to record until the next day anyhow, so for me, the midnight release isn't that important. I'm still going to pick it up Monday. Why do I say Monday? I'm going to pick it up Friday morning. But if you do have your copy pre-ordered somewhere, maybe check with your store, see if they're doing a midnight release as well. You could get your game as soon as Friday begins at 12 midnight. So, in other news, of course... Pokemon 20 is still being celebrated for the year, and for November, Genesect is the Pokemon in the spotlight. Now, currently for Genesect, you can pick up your code card at participating GameStop or EB Game Stores, GameStop in the US, EB Games in Canada. As for other or up elsewhere in the world, I don't know what other stores are participating on that, but feel free to check, I think if you check Serebii.net, they're pretty good with having the information of what stores are participating with the code card, so if you don't live in the US or Canada, just check that. My computer did something weird. Anyway, forget that. Uh, check that and see if maybe that they have a code card available there. Now, as I say, I could have mentioned this last week. If I had mentioned it last week, it might have been more prevalent in my mind. Because when I went to EB Games to pick up the Genesect code card, they're all out. I can't get Genesect! But I'm not that broken up about it. I'm not really that super focused on getting legendaries and mythical Pokemon. I like the regular Pokemon and make them as good as they can be. So if I miss out on Genesect, oh well. I'm sure at some point in the future they'll have another Genesect distribution, so I'm not too worried about that. But if you want to pick up your code card, as I said, go to GameStop or EB Games or elsewhere in the world. Check Serebii.net for more information, I'm sure, and you can get yourself a code card, unless they're out as well. Maybe, you know, it's kind of the same thing around everywhere, just like my store. But also celebrating for Genesect for the month of November, they do have, I believe they're exclusive to GameStop or EB Games, the 8-inch crushed velvet plush figure of Genesect and the 2-inch figure, which I would assume comes with a certain Pokeball. I couldn't see which Pokeball it was, but I'm sure every other one comes with a Pokeball, so wouldn't it be cool if they have a Master Ball for that one to match the purple of Genesect? I don't know, but it should come with some sort of a Pokeball, a nice pearlescent finish, I believe, as most of them have been having. And currently available on the Pokemon TV app and a few other places to watch this, you can check out Pokemon the Movie, Genesect, and The Legend Awakened. This, of course, is the movie featuring a swarm of Genesect attacking a town. I forget which town it's called, but the leader is a shiny Genesect, nice and red. And also featured is Mewtwo, but Mega Mewtwo Y in this movie as well. So if you want to check out The Legend of Mega Mewtwo Y and a shiny Genesect, you can check that out on Pokemon TV, the Pokemon TV app, or I think you can probably check it out on Pokemon.com as well. Also available, as you can see in just a moment, the Pokemon Mythical Collection for Pokemon TCG of Genesect is now available as well. In this, you get the foil promo card of Genesect, the collector's pin of Genesect itself, and two Pokemon TCG Generations booster packs, as well as a code card to unlock all sorts of good stuff in the online game. So if you haven't gotten all of your Generations cards just yet, and you're going to add Genesect to your collection in Pokemon TCG, you can pick up that collection on sale right now where TCG products are available. And moving on to some more TCG news, there's a lot of new collections coming out in the new year. Two more collections, actually three more collections, are coming out on January 6th of 2017. 
First up is a pair of Mythical Collections Pokemon TCG for Volcanion and Magearna. As you can see here, I'll mention off what they get here. It's going to be available, first of all, at the Pokemon Center website, as well as where Pokemon TCG products are sold starting January 6th in the new year. You get a full art foil promo card featuring either the mythical Pokemon Volcanion or Magearna, depending on which collection you get. In the Volcanion collection, you get five more foil promo cards featuring Celebi, Jirachi, Darkrai, Victini, and Keldeo. And in the Magearna, well, Magearna, in the Magearna collection, you get six more foil promos featuring Mew, Manaphy, Shaman, Arceus, Genesect, and Meloetta. You also get five Pokemon TCG booster packs in the collection and a code card to unlock, I'm sure, all these promo cards in the online game. And in addition to those two collections, also coming out on January 6th of 2017, Pokemon TCG Break Evolution Box featuring Arcanine. I guess since Ninetales Break became a thing for the Pokemon Evolutions expansion, they thought you gotta give the red counterpart Arcanine a Break Evolution too, right? So it's going to be three never-before-seen foil promo cards of Arcanine Break, Crobat Break, and Mandibuzz Break. So three Break Evolutions in this box. You also get the oversized card featuring Arcanine Break. And you get five Pokemon TCG booster packs in this collection, and a code card to unlock all these Break Evolutions in the online game as well. And that is all there is to really mention as far as news. So what we're going to do right now, we're going to click over to the Pokemon YouTube channel, because a new trailer featuring exclusive starter Pokemon Z moves and more Ultra Beasts coming to Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon. So, I don't know if this is the kind of trailer that will be blocked for copyright purposes or whatnot, so you might not see this. But if we can't show the footage, I will go to the Pokemon website and check out this information as they presented it in just a moment. But first of all, let's see what Pikachu has to say for this new information. And one sec, I gotta switch the uh, speaker around. All right, now we are set, so you shouldn't hear double the sound of the trailer. All right, exclusive Z moves for your partner Pokemon. Decidueye is gonna have a spooky looking Z move, look at that. Show us the name, what is it? Sinister Arrow Raid. Whoa, this reminds me of the what was that thing called from Pikmin 3 with like all the, the bees flying around it? I can't remember. Oh, you knocked out my pre marina! Okay, Incineroar Z move. We have the big the sneer on its face, it's like, I'm ready to destroy. Malicious Moonsault. Sounds like a dark type attack. This is kind of crazy. <laughs> big ol' wrestling body slam. Whatever you want to call that. And Primarina Z move. This is what appeals to me because, of course, I'll be using the water starter. You've got yourself the Oceanic Operetta. It's all about singing with this Pokemon. Look at the visuals of this. And hopefully, I can show this off. What? What? It, you're using Spirit Bomb. This is a Spirit Bomb in the game. Come on. <laughs> I like it! And a nice little bow to the audience. <clears throat> Alright, so, more Ultra Beasts are attacking. This? Okay, UB-03 Lightning. I look at this, I think Gladion. Look, oh, look, there's red! This makes me think of Gladion. Now, people were saying UB-02 Absorption looked like Gladion. No, this does. This one, however, I don't know. UB05 Glutton. Hang on. I'm gonna back this up. Where's UB04? You notice that? They went from 03 to 05. I wanna see this again. Lightning, of course, we're gonna have electric type attacks. So. Now, I'm sure people have data mined and everything, and they already know this, but this does prove that they are in battle. That was one of the things that I wasn't sure about. Do you battle them, or are they just story-based? But, you just saw, Slowbro took a hit from it. This looks like... Ultra Beast of Wishy-Washy, in a way. It's almost like a tank or submarine. And what are they doing? They're flaring up. Are they... They wouldn't be totems. More regional variants. Alright, they're finally going to show us... Brown Steel. Um. 
That must be some strong hair to become steel type. Hang on, where are the abilities? Sandveil and Tangling Hair. Hmm. It's basically just Diglett with a couple sprouts of hair. And then, of course, we've seen this from the uh, demo. We've seen it from the back, at least. Hmm. So neutral damage, because Steel would resist that. Tangling Hair. It's basically like the gooey ability of Gumi and Gudra. Okay. Don't miss these in-game gifts. You're, you are Sun, right? I have a Pokemon for you. They're going to hand you Magearna. You can, of course, get this from the demo, the uh, Greninja. And the Pulverizing Pancake for pre-ordering, you can get a Munchlax with the Z-Move, or the uh, Z-Crystal. Z and let's do a nice little recap of all the evolutionary stages of the starters here. Totem Pokemon, Ultra Beast Battle. There's so much coming in just four days' time. I can't wait. Like Every time a new trailer comes out, I'm even more excited for it. And sorry for the choppiness, my computer's still pretty bad processor-wise, so unfortunately, a little bit of delay on some of the video footage. But, let us now go to the website directly and see what other information is available. So, exclusive Z-moves for the starter Pokémon. <clears throat> it looked like... It looked like we had... Water... No, sorry, okay, the Grass-type seemed to have... A Ghost-type attack, I believe that was. Dark-type for Incineroar. And then we had water type for Primarina. And where are the exclusive ones? So they're talking about more move details. Wait a minute. Okay, so look at this picture right here. It shows Gigavolt Havoc for two attacks, but Z Thunder Wave? What is that? When you pour your Z Power into a status move, it will be power up into a status move with new effects added to it. These effects seem to come in many varieties, so some may raise your own Pokémon's stats, while others may heal the Pokémon to switch in. Okay, so, a Z-move will only inflict damage if the basic move it's built off of inflicts damage. But here you see a Z-Thunder Wave. Now, I've heard spoilers in 3, 2, and 1, but I've heard that the uh, Thunder Wave has been bumped down to 90% accuracy as opposed to 100. I wonder if they did this because a Z Thunder Wave would be fully accurate. Let me click this gallery here because this really intrigues me. A Pikachu holding Electrium Z will have its electric type moves powered up through Z Power. Wait, okay. Z Thunder Wave doesn't just afflict opponents with paralysis. It now raises the user's special defense as well. Alright, so it does show you what the Z Power effect is for each move. All right, and Z Memento. Okay, Memento. Normally when you use that, you're going to knock your own Pokemon out and sharply lower the offensive stats of the opposing Pokemon, but then you got to switch another Pokemon in. The Z Memento restores the replacement's HP, so it's like a healing wish in a way. I like this. It's going to make so many new, like, you can only use one Z move per battle. It's going to make so many interesting combinations. Like, I'm kind of blown away by this. This is kind of what I was hoping for. We now have a Z move based off of Splash. The user just flops and splashes around to no effect at all. The Z power effect is the attack goes up by three. Now, will Magikarp win any battles with that? Probably not, unless maybe it has bounce. You know, if it can learn, if they finally give some egg moves for Magikarp. But there is a Z splash. I don't really know what to make of that, but I, I like it. So, that's good to know. Status moves are going to have Z powered up moves as well. Alright, so Z move attack details. Z moves are based Z moves based on attack moves have far greater power than usual, but how powerful they be, they will be does, does seem to depend on the power of the original Z move it's based on. Since Z moves are full powered attacks, they also seem to be impossible to fully ward off with moves like protect and detect. They will still do damage. So you can't protect against a Z move. I'm sure type effectiveness will come into play, like a ground type will probably be immune to uh, Gigavolt Havoc, for example. Hmm. So the exclusive Z moves here. So, the exclusive Z move Sinister Arrow Raid for Decidueye. Decidueye slices through the air together with a hail of arrow quills, crashing into the target before dealing the final blow with its arrows. It doesn't say what type it is. In fact, do we even know they're going to have types? Because, like, 
the uh, Polarizing Pancake, it didn't really say it's a normal type attack. What if these are all attacks that inflict damage regardless of type? And it's just based on the power of the Pokemon or the attack you started off of. I don't know, that's speculation. Malicious Moonsault for Incineroar. Spouting flames from its flame belt, Incineroar leaps high into the sky and dives down upon its target. And Primarina manipulates a huge balloon with its voice, causing it to explode over its target's head to deal great damage. And then she takes a nice bow, he or she, takes a nice bow to the audience afterwards. So that's some info on the Z-moves. A lot of information on the Z-moves, actually. I like that. I'm still kind of trying to think. Status moves that are Z-powered up. I don't know. There's going to be some pretty cool combinations. But only one per battle. So, new Ultra Beast. You know what? Let's take a, take a look at the Ultra Beast in a moment. They're talking about the trio of amazing Pokemon for your team. The uh, giveaways. Greninja can be added to your uh, game for the, the full game from the demo version, of course. Scrolling down, we see Magearna. You get a QR code. Okay, so get the mythical Pokemon Magearna at a certain point in the game by scanning a QR code using QR Scanner. After scanning the code, you'll be able to get Magearna on your team by visiting the antique shop in Howley City Shopping Mall. So that's how you get Magearna. And Munchlax. Obtain the early purchase gift of a Munchlax that evolves into Pulverizing Snorlax and Snorlium Z via the internet as a mystery gift. So if you've pre-ordered your copy of the game, that's how you can get Magearna, not Magearna, uh, Munchlax with the Snorlium Z. Alright, so that is just a brief recap of that, but I'm getting right to these Ultra Beasts. I want to see what... So, there's a fourth one that's missing. I still just... okay. UB01, Absorption. We see Beauty here. Now, UB03, Gladi... Uh, Lightning. Doesn't say anything about it, it just shows it. Alright, that is fine. Keep some surprises in-game, but we gotta remember, this is Lightning. They haven't mentioned types for the other two, or the well, other two, UB01 or UB02. UB05 Glutton. This beast has an astounding appetite and it will completely devour anything in front of its eyes. It's said that it devours not only objects, but the ground, rivers, and even the seas. This thing seems dangerous. Its tongue has spikes. Are those taste buds? Look at that. And where does the hatch in the back go? That's like probably its esophagus, in, you know, in terms of like our own physiology, but is... Does that lead to a portal to an unending dimension? That's kind of speculation as well, let's leave it at that. Despite the abnormal amounts that this beast consumes, it's said that it doesn't produce any waste products. Eww. It's possible that it's completely converting everything it eats into energy to sustain itself, sustain itself but the true details remain unknown. So that's Glutton UB05. UB04 isn't even shown, and UB03 Lightning has no description, but people were speculating that this has to be Gladion, the Team Skull Enforcer, because it com it combines with like Lily and uh, Lusamine as the trio of blonde-haired, green-eyed, or blue-eyed, whatever they are, people of the Alola region, but no, based on the stance, the hair, just the colors, and the fact that it becomes red when it uses whatever power-up attack it's going for, this looks like Gladion to me. So let me go ahead and go up here to Alola region. We're going to look at the people and just look at Gladion and the way he does his pose. Where's Team Skull? Um, this is new. I haven't seen this yet. <laughs> Even more mystery awaits in Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon. Okay, we'll deal with you later. Uh, there's no information on you just yet. What is this? Ex look for Pokemon. Okay, this I want to check out because I've been mentioning, I've heard that there are some Pokemon exclu ex exclusivity in Sun and Moon. Uh, exclusive to Pokemon Sun. Yes! Oh, yes! Okay. What I had heard was that Pokemon or sorry, the Alolan Sandshrew was exclusive to Pokemon Sun. As it turns out, that is not the case. Sandshrew is in Moon. Sandshrew is one of the two Pokemon I know for sure I'm going to add to my team. And Sandshrew is in Pokemon Moon. That I'm okay with. I was thinking I'd have to trade Pokemon to get a Sun version, but fortunately, no. Alright, so for those of you that are getting Sun, you can look forward to Passimian, Alola Vulpix, and Turtonator. And for Moon version, we have uh, Oranguru, Alolan Sandshrew, and Drompa. And what's up with Rockruff? Rockruff is a special Pokemon that can evolve into different forms depending on which game you're playing. However, you may be able to find both of its evolved forms in the wild. Okay! 
That is interesting. Because I'm going to be getting the moon version. I do like the, th uh, the thought that I could get the uh, midnight form of Lycanroc, but looks-wise, I kind of like the the midday form plus the Accelerock attack it gets, which is exclusive. So, I don't know. I was thinking of adding Rockruff to the team and letting it evolve into the midnight form to sort of cement the fact that I've played the moon version of Gen 7, but I don't know. I might rethink that. We'll have to wait and see. But I'm glad I found this information about the exclusive Pokemon. Now, scrolling further down, there's the Ultra Beast, Battle Tree, Kahunas, Trial Captains, and the Ruffians of Team Skull. Just, the, I'm getting so sidetracked with more information. I should probably check the entire website and see if there's anything else. But look at Gladion, just his color scheme, the way he's kind of standing, the, the fact that he's a thin, almost like a lanky character. I couldn't see him becoming Ultra Beast Zero Two Absorption because that thing is so bulked out, right? But I can see him having some physical correlation to Ultra Beast Zero Three Lightning. I don't know if anyone else can see that or not, but hopefully you can get where I'm coming from. If you want to scroll back to the main page and just look at the the, the thin body shape of Ultra Beast Zero Three Lightning in that. As for who Absorption and Glutton are going to be, I don't know if they are going to be people or at least have some sort of human comparison. They don't look like they could be people, but that could surprise me. I don't know. That could be Tierno, perhaps, the uh, Ultra Beast 05, but that's all speculation. I think that basically covers everything I wanted to check out here on the site. Just let me quickly scroll through the Pokemon, see if anything else is on here, because I just found some new stuff that was buried in the site that I didn't know about. Actually, no, we do have to look at the Alolan Doug Trio and Diglett. And I don't think anything else is here, but I'm going to quickly scroll down through. We've seen all these Pokemon before. Da, 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 da. Nothing new, nothing new. I'm just kind of rambling. Of course, you can tell there's nothing new as I'm going through. And, okay. On to the new tab of Alolan Diglett. <coughs> Ground Steel. Uh, Diglett in the Alola region live near volcanic areas, so they have few places to hide themselves away. Their tunneling activity plows the land, creating cultiva cultivated soil that's great for agriculture. Because of this, many people in the Alola region are grateful for the presence of Diglett. The hair-like growth sprouting from Diglett's head are metallic whiskers. So that is metal hair! It's said that they developed these stiff yet flexible whiskers in order to survive the hostile volcanic environment. The whiskers provide a sensory function, enabling Alola and Diglett to scan the surrounding area without exposing their faces above ground. Their current emotional state is revealed by their whiskers. When their whiskers stand straight up, they're angry. <coughs> Excuse me. Whiskers that wave are a sign that the Pokemon is on alert. When they swing their whiskers around, they're in a good mood. And when their whiskers droop, they're feeling lonely or downhearted. Kind of like our own hair, except not at all. Alolan Diglett have the Tangling Hair ability. With the Tangling Hair ability, opponents that hit Alolan Diglett with a move that makes direct contact have their speed lowered by one. Alright, and let's check out the Alolan Doug Trio. I remember looking at the Alola form and I'm thinking, how? what other type could it be? Like... It still comes out of the ground, so I do see that, of course, they kept the ground typing, but they added steel for the hair. In the Alola region, Doug Trio is revered as an incarnation of the god of the land, and is treated with great importance. This is why the people of Alola fall to their knees and bow deeply whenever they come across an Alolan Doug Trio that has poked its faces out of its burrow. Alolan Doug Trio's whiskers shine with a brilliance akin to golden hair. The whiskers are flexible, just like Diglett's, but are hard and strong. <coughs> they continue to grow throughout an Alolan Doug Trio's life, although at a very slow rate. Removing Alolan Doug Trio whiskers from the Alola region. Removing Alola Doug Trio whiskers from the Alola region is prohibited. Okay, so you can't take the hair. It's said that those who take them receive divine punishment. Divine punishment. Every year, many tourists come back, apparently to return whiskers they had taken. I wonder what happened to them to cause them to come back. The divine punishment. What could that be? That leads to the question. What if in if they make Gen 8, which, you know, I'm sure they will eventually, but we'll have to wait and see. What if you get an Alolan Doug Trio and take it to another region? Is something going to happen in that game? That'd be kind of funny if they do something like that. There is a superstitious belief that many Alolan Doug Trio come out of their holes in a day when a volcano will erupt. Older residents of Alola will flee immediately at the site. It's thought that Alolan Doug Trio, which live beneath the ground surface, detect movements in the ground that indicate an impending eruption and are so alarmed that they come above ground. So, in-game... If we see an event where a bunch of Alolan Doug Trio appear, prepare yourself for some sort of fire-type encounter, because a, a volcano is likely going to erupt if this is true. So I think, is there anything else in the Alola region section of the site? There's the map here. There is the same stuff. There's whatever the heck this thing is. That looks legendary. 
version exclusive. I think this is all the same. Team Skull, the Rite of Passage. Okay, that's all the same. I'm going to check cool features before calling it a wrap for the website coverage. There's the amazing trio. Exclusive Z moves. Lots of ways to battle with friends. I don't see they're mentioning triple or rotation battle. I kind of like those battle styles, so I hope that they stay in. There are four formats of Link Battles you can participate in from your Sun or Moon game. Quick Link, Local Wireless, Link Battles in the Festival Plaza, either wireless or internet, Battle Spot, Free Raiding, or Battle Spot, ra uh, Rattle Bait. Rattle Baiting. <laughs> Raiding Battle. Some battle methods are restricted from use depending on the format. Single and Double... Single and Double Battles are permitted in any of the formats. Multi Battles are permitted only in Link Battles. You can play in the battle format via Link Battles in Festival Plaza and in Battle Spot Free Battle. So I wonder, do we still... Okay, wait. Pokemon permitted in the Battle Spots Free Battles. The Battle Spots Free Battle format now has the ability to choose whether or not to include special Pokemon, including certain legendary and mythical Pokemon for Pokemon selection. I kind of like that, because many times, like I've been doing the Wi-Fi battles on po uh, Omega Ruby in the Free Battle for the past little while, and... I kind of don't like the fact that I'm not using legendaries, but the opponents usually have legendaries. Now, I'm pretty good at winning against them, so I'm okay with that, but banning those Pokemon makes it a more even playing field. Transmission of regular data. There are plans to distribute regulation data as needed so that players can experience different regulations together with their friends or other players in the plaza, even outside of competitions. Notifications regarding which regulations are currently available will be provided at the Pokemon Global link. All right, let me just quick the, or quickly click the gallery and see. Does it show other types of battles? We've got single or double. I guess that's just for quick link, though. Yeah, I kind of hope the rotation and triple battles are still in, because I like those. Those are kind of interesting on, you know, mixing things up a little bit. But that is it for the site. I think there's a lot of cool information, a lot of things that they've revealed here that are still mysterious. People that have data mined the information thus far already have all this information. I saw a link on Twitter showing a tier list of Ultra Beasts and Legendaries and stuff, but I'm like, I looked away immediately. I don't want to even know what the Legendaries or the Ultra Beasts are, so forget that. But they're starting to give us some just little sneak peeks of what else is to come in the full games. But now it is time to move on to the opening of the three booster packs, Primal Clash, Roaring Skies, and Ancient Origins. But first, of course, i got to give the question of the day, which is... So, okay, first of all, for those of you that are going to be watching on my channel of my Pokemon Moon coverage, I'm glad to have you along for the ride, and I hope you enjoy the video footage, even though not as good quality as other people out there. It's some, there's some choppiness here and there, and I'm sure there's better footage out there from other people. But, just out of curiosity, who are some other Pokemon YouTubers you'll be watching play Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon? Just leave that in a comment down below and include hashtag QOTD in your comment. And on Sunday, November 20th, I'll be giving a code card out to a lucky viewer. Well, each code card I'll be drawing for one random viewer that has answered the question with the hashtag in the comment. And you'll have a chance to win the code card from these packs I'm about to open up. Now, as far as other Pokemon YouTubers that I watch, I'm basically asking, give me some ideas who else I can check out. I watch three regular people, that uh, all their footage and uploads that they do. Uh, Shady Penguin and The King Nappy are the first two that I really got hooked on watching. And through their Wi-Fi battles through UCL and stuff, I watch Game Boy Luke a lot as well, too. So, once I get through my own footage of Pokemon Sun and Moon, like I get my own playthrough done, I'll be watching their coverage of it. Unfortunately, I think they're going to be uploading a lot faster than I will be, so it's going to take a while for me to actually get to their footage. But feel free to let me know who else you'll be watching, and I'll probably check out their footage as well once I've completed my own playthrough. So, with all that, it is now time to pop these three packs open and see what cards I get. I wonder if I'll be getting any... There is, I believe, Secret Rare versus Seeker, if not in Primal Clash, in one of these sets. But I could get the coveted Full Art Shaman EX from Roaring Skies. Let's open these right now and find out. And now it is time to pop these three packs open with, as always, the Pikachu EX Red and Blue Collection sitting in the back watching over us. Which, as I always mention, I'm sure many of you are tired of hearing it by now. But, once we do hit 1,000 subscribers to the channel, I'm going to do an on-screen unboxing of the Pikachu EX Red and Blue Collection. And offer up the code card in here to a lucky viewer for that question of the day in that video. But I also want to buy another copy of this, or maybe one of the other collections that are coming out soon. And do a physical mail-out of one of these collections as a celebration of hitting a landmark 1,000 subscribers here on the channel. Channel. So if you're not subscribed yet, feel free to do so, boost those numbers up, and get closer to getting these giveaways handed out to people out there watching. 
Now, let's start with the oldest pack of Primal Clash. This is the most... Okay, what were you saying? The oldest set available in the current standard format. So make sure the code card is nice and secreted to the side until November 20th when I'll be doing the drawing. And now, let's see what luck has in store for me out of this pack. Starting, of course, with the common cards. Make sure we're focused first of all. We've got a Barboach. There's Surskit. Have a Hippopotas, or Hippopotas, I don't know how to pronounce it really. Torchic. And Tentacool. Uncommon card, starting with a Beeberl. We have an Experience Share. A Rhydon. Reverse Foil card is Professor Birch's Observations. I like to make use good of that, or I like to make good use of that, so a reverse reverse foil version is very nice to get. And the rare card of the pack is not bad! Gardevoir EX. I already have, I think, one of these. I might have traded it, but if not, I have another one right now. So we'll put you back here with the EX collection for Pikachu. Alright, so that is good luck out of the first one. Let's see if the luck continues with the Roaring Skies. Come on, Shaman. I know that's pretty far-fetched I'll be getting that, but you never know. Every booster pack has a chance to have that particular card. So let me tear the back a little bit more and make sure the code card is slipped to the side. And now, what do we get? Common cards again, starting off. We've got a Togepi. Execute. A Not to with the Ancient Trait of Delta Plus. Or is it Delta Plus? Yes. We have Fletchling. And Wormpole. The Uncommons begin with a Fero. A Mega Turbo. Winona. Reverse Foil card is a, an Ancient Trait Delta Plus Swellow. Pretty cool. Rare card is Bayonet with the Tool Concealment. Each Pokemon Tool card to play has no effect. Psy Shot for 60. Unfortunately, no Shaman, but I guess all I can say is that's a shame. Alright, the last pack of Ancient Origins with the shiny Primal Groudon on the cover. I should say the uh, pack art, not exactly a cover, but let us grab this code card, slip to the side, and the last pack of the day. What do we get? We've started with an Eevee, an Oddish, Ralts, Magikarp with Epic Splash, Z-Move Epic Splash, I want that, and a Meowth, Act Tough with Dark Energy, and Level Ball starts the Uncommons, a Sligu, and Faded Town, Reverse Foil card is a Flash Energy, pretty flashy looking, and the rare card is Machamp EX. All right, we got two EXs today. Very cool, Steaming Mad and Crazy Hammer. So we'll put you right back there with the Pikachu as well. We've got a Fighting, a Lightning still sealed away in the box, and a Fairy Pokemon EX. So that's what I got out of the cards today. Again, for your chance to win one of these three code cards that I pulled out of the packs today, just answer this question of the day. Who, sorry, who are some other Pokemon YouTubers you'll be watching play Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon? Just leave that answer in a comment down below. Include the hashtag QOTD in your comment, and then on Sunday, November 20th, I'll be doing a search of the comments, and everyone that used, that, the, uh, used the hashtag, and each person that has done that has a chance to be drawn to win one of these three code cards that are all upside down here. There we go. They're all fancy looking now. So we have a chance to win those on November 20th when I do the drawing. With all that, I want to say thanks for checking out the last Pokemon News update before Sun and Moon come out. And come on back for the rest of the week. We're going to finish up as much as we can in Pokemon Sapphire. Also have another Pokemon TCG match later on this week. I'm going to aim for Wednesday as I usually aim for, but I usually fail. But we'll see what happens. And come on back on Friday for the debut footage on my channel of my Pokemon Moon adventure. I'm looking forward to starting that up. And I'm looking forward to getting that Alolan Sandshrew. Yes! With all that, Professor Chaz is now signing off. Come on back later on today for the first episode of the four remaining of Pokemon Sapphire as we take on Moss Deep City Gym. All right, once again, thanks for checking out today's episode. Feel free to leave a like down below if you liked it. If you didn't like it, feel free to throw a dislike and just let me know what did I do wrong? You know, what can I fix up for the future? With all that, Professor Chaz is signing off. Thank you once again for checking out the episode, and I'll catch you next time.